What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna make some code changes to our Notes app that we've been working on to help us get ready to add a couple of new features. I believe this is actually part 16 of this series. Um, and if you wanna follow along with the whole thing from the beginning, you can do that over at our website, www.techmaker.tv. Um, in any case, this is really gonna be kind of a work session. We're gonna be focused on each one of these elements, we're gonna push them into their own partials, and then we're gonna work on blending the active record objects into essentially uh, one thing that we can iterate through. Um, so anyway, we'll talk about that as we go through it, but um, as always, if you like this episode, be sure to give me a thumbs up, and if you want more content like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. With all of that said, let's go ahead and jump into the code. All right, so back over in the code editor, Let's take a look at, I believe it's actually um, pages show. So what we have going on is we have, we're, it, we're looping through each one of our paragraphs and then, you know, if it's persisted, we're doing this or that. Then we're doing the same type of thing with the image elements and then the same thing with the checklist. And the checklist is obviously a much more complex kind of thing. Um, what I want to do is push each one of these into its own partial to start. So we'll have a paragraph partial, we'll have an image element partial, and we'll have a checklist partial. And then we're going to blend them. And the reason that we're doing this is we want to make this a little bit more uniform, and ultimately we're going to make it drag and drop sortable. So let's go ahead and just kind of step through this um, from the beginning. So in our views, we have this pages folder. That's not where we want to be. We have paragraphs. We have this paragraph JSON builder. We don't even need that. I'm actually going to delete it, and I'm going to delete all of these JSON builders really quick. Um, it's probably not important that I do that right now, but it just kind of perturbs me, so we're going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to create a new file in here, and it's going to be called underscore paragraph .html .erb. And what I want to do is over in my show, I want to basically just cut all of this and paste this here and now what I want to do is say render and then we'll say paragraphs paragraph and then we need to provide it all of the relevant variables so we need to say that the paragraph is paragraph and then what we're gonna do is take the notebook and page objects and make those local variables so we'll have notebook and we'll have page here and then we'll do well let's see let me think about this in actual fact we could I wonder how the performance would be if we actually like put up here we could do something like uh, page equals notebook dot page you know what this is gonna be a little bit easier for some for a couple of reasons that'll be obvious in a minute so we'll check it out this there may be some uh, performance concerns to be worried about here I'm doing this inverted anyway so page should be paragraph dot page I'm doing a giant performance project right now so I'm hyper worried about that all the time um, but I think this is gonna be cleaner so I'm gonna kinda stick with that for the moment dot notebook and then we don't even need to pass those in, in theory, so we can just have it like this. Now let's go refresh and see what this looks like, if it even works. So it looks like it works exactly how it did before, and we're good to go. So the nice thing about how we have this here is instead of saying render paragraph, paragraph, and then all of this sort of repetitive terminology, we can just say render paragraph, I think. And it works just the same. And so it's because of the naming conventions, basically. If you put a underscore paragraph partial in the paragraphs folder, then it works like that, which is kind of why I didn't want to have to pass in. And we're going to make it even nicer in just a second. Um, but we can go ahead and do that. We can say um, render paragraphs. And so that's actually pretty straightforward. I didn't like that. Nil is not an active model object. 
hold on a second. Getting carried away here. It's page dot paragraphs. There we go. Got surprised for a second, so now it's not printing them out because it didn't put an equal sign. There we go, finally. So again, um, we'll worry with the performance stuff later, potentially in a future episode. Um, and it may vary how we actually approach the problem because I may swap this over to view components pretty soon. Um, but in any case, this is going to set the foundation for some stuff that we're going to be working on next. So let's go ahead and do the same type of thing for image elements. So we don't have an image elements uh, directory yet. So I'm going to create one called image elements here. We'll create a new file image elements.html.erb. We'll go back over to our show. It's the same exact thing. And I'm going to copy the yeah, the so I'm going to copy these and paste them at the top up here. And this is making me feel like maybe it would be a good idea to have the view components or something um, and then right here instead of going through all of each step I'm just going to try to go directly to at page dot image elements and let's just make sure we've got everything saved and let's refresh and see where we are um, undefined local variable or method paragraph and that makes sense um, so this should be image element And now we're back to where we were. I feel like I had a delete button or something up here. Is that my imagination? Maybe that's in a different app. I'm doing several different things that are all very similar right now, but I thought I had that here. Um, I guess not. So that's fine, I suppose. We'll worry about that later. Um, so we don't need this. Now finally we want to do the same with checklists and let's hope that it doesn't need to be more complicated but it might be so who knows so checklists and then in here we'll have a um, new file underscore checklist.html.erb same exact thing it's a lot more code obviously we'll just cut that paste it in here so we need to get the notebook and the page, and I'm just checking if there's any other kind of instance variables in here. It doesn't look like there are, but there are more of them, so we need to make sure that we replace them. So page is going to be checklist.page, and then we'll come down here and just make sure we fix all of these. And I think there's a couple more down here. Okay, there's quite a bit of code in this partial. And then I'm just going to try to do um, render at page.checklist. So this cleans up this view a lot, obviously, but we're going to keep going actually. So let's just refresh and let's see. So we'll add an item. And we can in progress, complete. Cool. So everything works exactly how it was so that's basically how we can set up partials but I want to take this a step further let's look back at our code here so if we wanted to say sort these so you have a paragraph then you have a checklist then you have an image or whatever you couldn't do that right now and that's because these things are all rendering out separately so I want to fix that so let's go over to our uh, page object and I want to basically create a method called elements. Now, in a newer series that we started, I think it was either the blog or maybe projects or both. I think it was probably the blog series. We did this a bit differently, um, just using one type of object. Um, and maybe that's a smarter way to do it. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but in any case, this will probably work. And I'm going to stick with this since we already started this way. So since we... Um, have multiple types of objects we need to blend them and the way that I'm gonna do that just as a starting point is to create a method on my page called elements and I'm gonna say the let's just say paragraphs plus 
image elements plus checklist. And let's go see what happens if we just say render page.elements. So we're just going to get rid of all of that and then refresh. And it looks like basically we have exactly the same thing. And so as uh, that render method loops through everything, basically what it does is it says, does this model have a quote unquote two partial path? And then because we define the partials in the structure that it expects, it knows where to find them and so on. So we can just call them elements. But what this does for us, let's imagine that we want to sort. So in the next episode, or one of the next episodes, we might do something like sort by and position. And that's going to basically let us drag and drop and sort and whatever. But for now, we can't do that. What we could do is sort by something like update of that. This will give us problems, though, because we do have some unsaved objects in these. Um, so let me think about this for a second. So what we could do, just as a quick example, I got to think about what the real best way to do here, or best thing to do here would be. Um, but we can, for now we can say uh, select and persisted. So that's only the stuff that's saved to the database, and then sort those things by updated that. And now if we come over here and look, it looks kind of the same. But what happens if I um, edit this. So let's say um, show up first. So now that's at the end actually. So let me try again. So you can see what's happening is it's sorting them in basically the opposite order as we would imagine. So we could say dot reverse or something like that. And now we get the hello world again. And so anyway, we won't we won't keep this uh, exact terminology in here, but I wanted to at least kind of show how it could work. So there's definitely some drawbacks to this because once you start doing all of the stuff that we're doing in this elements method, uh, these are not doing database queries anymore. These are in Ruby. So you have to load all of these items um, and then your basically doing Ruby operations on them, which is going to be slower than like pulling stuff and sorting from the database. Um, in this case, given that each page isn't going to have a ton of elements, I wouldn't be too worried about that personally. Uh, I think that each, you know, in these sorts of conversations around performance, it depends. It's a case by case basis thing. But in general, I wouldn't now that I've kind of looked at this a little bit further, I might architect this a little bit differently, and I think it's important to say that since you might be new to Rails or something. Um, so if you want to see a different way to do it, go look at the, I think it's the blog, How to Build a Blog with Rails 6 series. Uh, we do this a bit differently. Um, I may kind of push into this topic in coming episodes on how we could do this with this architecture, but actually do it better. Um, but I don't know that there's actually a big win in terms of this particular app here. So for now, I'm actually going to leave this elements method here. I'm going to get rid of all of this select and whatever stuff because it's not really useful at the moment um, and just kind of leave it with the default sorting. But we're going to do a drag and drop session soon where we make all of these elements sortable with drag and drop. And then we'll need to build out something kind of like that where we can uh, grab all of these elements and then sort them based on their position in the list. Um, so that will make more sense when you see that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it alone. I think that's going to be it for now. I thought it would be interesting to kind of just show you if you haven't seen before exactly how partials work and the naming conventions and rails. So now you kind of know and um, we also are set up to kind of move forward with this a little bit more. Uh, with drag and drop and so on so anyway that's it for this episode uh, if you like this episode as always be sure to give it a thumbs up that helps me out a lot um, but i will talk to you in the next episode